Hello and welcome to a fully charged news update. Now, before I start, there are three names of amazing Patreon supporters I just want to mention. Now, they have implied to me in the most polite and lovely way that I haven't mentioned their names before, and I'm going to make up for it now, right at the top. They are Stin Speaker. That's what I'm guessing. Stin Speaker. There we go. It's quite hard for me. I'm English. I can't speak the language of Stin Speaker but he can speak English really well, so that's even more embarrassing. The other one is Mini Diggerman. Mini Diggerman is a legend, and he's been a great supporter of Patreon, and Adam Varadi. So those three are getting special, special, ultra-cool name checks on Fully Charged. Uh, now, uh, half of all new car sales in Norway were electric cars. Isn't that unbelievably incredible. Now, okay, it's got a lot of government uh, support uh, for it, so you get you get all kinds of tax breaks if you get an electric car and you get penalised if you buy a great big gas guzzler. What a sensible uh, government they, they have. I can't imagine what that's like to have a government like that. Anyway, I'm amazed, or as they say in Norwegian, Jeg er overrasket. <laughs> Did that sound Norwegian to you? Because it didn't to me. Uh, but anyway, back in good old Blighty. Ah, yes, it's great to be back in the country. I've been in Australia for six weeks, but it's great to be back here when we're governed by such a forward-thinking and independent government. Isn't that wonderful? We're very, very privileged. This is a slightly Brexit-related story, but don't worry, it's not going to be too political. I know so many people tell me, don't be political, just do what you're good at. I've never known what I'm good at. So anyway, this is a mildly political story, but it's a really important one. And it's a Brexit-related story that possibly hasn't appeared just yet in the Daily Mail, for example. I'm just picking a newspaper out of the, out of the, the ether. Uh, nothing serious, so you don't need to worry. It's about a thing called Euratom. Have you heard of it? I never had. We didn't really need to because Euratom is just the Europe-wide body that oversees all nuclear power stations in the whole of Greater Europe. And obviously, very specifically, nuclear waste handling facilities. Now, they've been doing it for decades. No one talks about it. It's been a very smoothly run operation dealing with some of the most dangerous substances that the human race has ever managed to produce. And where is the biggest nuclear waste facility in the whole of Europe? It is, of course, in the United Kingdom. It's at Sellafield, just off the Cumbrian coast. And it is huge. I've been there about three times. I've given talks to engineers there. I'm very lucky to have met them all. And let me tell you, these people, the engineers at Sellafield, are doing some of the most important jobs in the country. We really need these people to be working there. They are the true British heroes with what they're doing and what they're dealing with. Euratom, as they will verify, has a rather important presence in Sellafield. They own all the cameras. They own the seals to show that the nuclear waste hasn't been nicked and used to something nefarious. They own the testing laboratories and, they, and the, all the observation facilities for, for Europe's largest nuclear waste reprocessing facility. So apart from anything else, we may need to set up a whole new body to oversee this vitally important work. Now imagine what setting up a whole new uh, administrative body would cost. Actually, don't imagine. You don't need to. According to government sources, it will cost hundreds of millions of pounds over the next 20 years or so. And that's just to start it up. You need to remember it's not just spent nuclear fuel or, and nuclear weapon-grade materials that they store at Sellafield, which is under 24-hour guard, which costs us billions every year. It's also materials for scientific analysis and medical use. This is really important. We forget about all this. Radiotherapy materials for most cancer treatments is, is originally produced in Sellafield. Now, at the moment, decision-making regarding what we're going to do about Euratom is not particularly going rapidly or smoothly. In fact, according to one senior British negotiator, it is described as an absolute nightmare. That is a quote. So one of the problems is that we need the skills of an incredibly large amount of very, very highly trained people to deal with this stuff. Not only the skills, we also need very complex technology, a lot of which comes from Europe. If we can't get these skilled people to come and work in this country, if we can't get the vitally important and extremely expensive products we need to make our power stations run, then those power plants will have to be closed down and mothballed until we can sort it out. Now, I am confident it's not going to come to that. There's such vast investments in the nuclear power industry in this country <coughs> from Europe. Remember that uh, Hinkley Point C is not being built by us, it's being built by a French company backed by a Chinese company. <sighs> for an enormous amount of money. I'm just saying that. Sorry, I'm not going to rub it in. Enormous amount of money. Anyway, I'm sure that they will have to fudge something together. But it is a really important 
thing that we are aware of because we reprocess spent nuclear fuel from France, Ukraine, Sweden, Belgium and other countries all around the world. You see, they get the power and then we get the waste. Isn't that a lovely arrangement? Now, I'm going to read a quote now, and I don't do this very often, but I really want to make sure I get this right. This is by a quote from Francis Livens, who is the director of the Dalton Nuclear Research Institute at Manchester University. And he said, it's one of those things that look simple when you start out, but when you get into the detail, and this is probably true in many other areas of Brexit, you find a lot of hidden complexity. There's decades of entanglement to be untangled. They must untangle it. I mean, you've got to. We've got no choice. And the obvious thing is it's just going to cost an enormous amount of money. And now for something a little bit less contentious with a lot more hope and optimism. Now, we all hear a great deal about sort of movie stars and TV celebrities and, and people who are celebrities just because they, they're famous for being famous. And we get a lot of coverage about those people. Meanwhile, actual proper people who do amazingly important and, and game-changing uh, creativity, they don't get any, they don't get a look in. They're not even on the back pages. Well, I want to rectify that because there are some people in this world who do amazing things and in this particular case, do amazing things for an incredible long time. Now, this old chap, who the hell is he, you might ask? Now, 40 years ago, this bloke was a researcher in the physics department of Oxford University in the United Kingdom. He came up with a particular battery design you might have heard of. It was called lithium ion batteries. Well, no one was interested at the time. This was back in the 1970s. Who gives a toss about lithium ion batteries? That's what the, our, our attitude was. So eventually this Japanese company you might have heard of called Sony popped in, had a chat with, with this, this old fella and said, we'll have your batteries, mate. Lovely. Here's five quid for the patent. Now, the same man, his name is Pro Professor John Goodenough, works at the Cockrell School of Engineering at the University of Texas in Austin. Yes, the same bloke. He's still working and he is 94 years old. What a total dude. He's not stopped inventing. He and his team have come up with an all solid state battery cell that appears to be, we don't know yet, it's still in its experimental stages, but they've got, they've pr produced a paper which is being peer reviewed at the moment. That's how science works. And a lot of the responses to it are very positive. This is a, a battery cell that is safer, can charge faster, can charge and discharge more times and has way more energy density than current technology. Instead of liquid electrolytes, which is what are found in current battery technology, the researchers rely on glass electrolytes. Yes, solid glass. This makes them far safer, as there is zero chance of the formation of what are called dendrites in liquid electrolytes. Yeah, you see, some of you will know all about dendrites in liquid electrolytes. But this is the can be, very rarely, but can be the cause of fires in lithium ion batteries. It's basically little tentacles of electron charged dubris that go for blah, blah, blah. And if they all touch, <coughs> yeah, that's the scientific explanation. Only someone with an advanced degree in physics would understand that. But the other big plus of this new battery design is the materials in them are common as muck. It's basically a sodium glass battery. It's got no cobalt, no lithium. It's sodium and glass. That is salt and glass. Can you believe it? You'll have a glass battery. Oh, what happens if I drop the battery and it shatters? Will I explode to death? Let's hope not. Now, these batteries are not here now. The research continues, and it's important to say Professor Goodenough is part of an amazing team from all over the world who are working on this. But after all the hype about massive breakthroughs in battery technology, all the spin we've heard about battery tech over the last few years, this breakthrough really has caught the eye of the scientific community and battery manufacturers. There's a lot more hope in this particular design than there has been in anything else I've heard of for a long time. So put it another way, this sounds like a kosher battery breakthrough. So it's hats off to Professor Goodenough and the team behind this new sodium glass battery. You are the real celebrities on Fully Charged. Okay, that's all I've got time for. But before I go, uh, I'd just like to, to read out some names of amazing Patreon supporters who uh, donate $10 a month or more to Fully Charged. It really is fantastic that there's so many people doing this. It's going to take a long time to read out all the names. Please be patient with me. I will get through them eventually. But here are big thanks to David Moore, Paul Cage, Alistair Edgington, AP Mountain Man, Gareth Williams, Rune, mm, Pauli Vallow, Tim Horrocks, Jonathan Hilton, and Will Becker. Thank you very much. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.